Hello all, here's Corbin from Corin.info and I'm delighted to see you again for a new video. So dear Patreon, today we'll do something really cool, simple, based on AI technology. But before, if you watch this video on YouTube, I wanted to invite you to join us on Patreon. You take your browser and you type in https-patreon.com.corbin and you will have all the information to join us. Today we'll learn how to retrieve data from a website. It can be your website, a website with documentation, etc. It's simple and I'll show you the process. And incorporate it into a bot, into a GPT chat assistant so that you are able to then ask it questions and receive its assistance. So we can envision, for instance, I utilize this use case. It is a technical tool, a tool that I would like to test on which I require assistance. I'll give him the documentation of this tool, then I can talk to him, question him, and he'll respond based on his knowledge. But you can imagine like this, making it very simple for a GPT chat assistant to absorb all the content of your website or all the content of a book, well, whatever you want. Then create the bot and it will answer all questions, interact with you based on knowledge base. There you go, you'll see it's simple to do. Won't take us much time, but I'll show you the site document I want. This has nothing to do with the tutorial, it's the documentation I need. So it is a theme tool for Hugo, designed for those who are familiar. So I click on guide here, and there I have access to a comprehensive documentation. I chose it because it's a small documentation, but you can put bigger things. And it explains how to use it, there are parameters, fields, formats, in short, it's quite basic, there's nothing very complicated, but I take it as an example. And in order to utilize this documentation, we will employ a tool, a tool that operates in Node.js known as GPT Crawler. What is GPT Crawler? It's a tool to browse a website, produce a file exploitable later by a bot, a chat assistant GPT. GPT Crawler is a crawler, a tool for GPT. We'll install it, I'll demonstrate installation, usage, and configuration of the assistant behind it. You will see it's very simple. The first step is simply to clone the project repository. So it's git clone https githubcom builderio gpt crawler, so that's going to clone what's on the git repository simply. And we will go to the gpt crawler directory. If I do a little ls, I see that we can run it on docker if you're interested, it's also possible, but it's not the purpose of this video. We'll now install the dependencies, so for that we'll do an npm i. npm i will retrieve the project files and install the dependencies it needs. Let it roll, retrieve everything it needs, install everything it needs, there you go, perfect. Once that's done, you may have seen in the files, we have config.ts. You open it with whatever you want, a Visual Studio, a text editor, I'm going to open it with nano. So I'm going to do nano config.ts and as you can see inside there is a small configuration. Essentially, the initial parameter is the URL. The URL serves as the starting point of the crawl where the robot will navigate to gather the data. So I delete this and I'm just going to give him the URL where my documentation is. Here. I put this so, I show it to you, the document is here, that's the page where we start. Then there is a match. Match allows you to specify kind of like the pattern if you want, the URL it needs. So I have a slash guide here, slash guide, but if I look a little closer, you see there are sections. There's writing config. If I check URLs here, e.g. if I click on config here at the top, it's more guide, it's config. So well, what I will finally retrieve in the URL is everything that is behind stack.jimmykale.com. So there you go, it will retrieve the slash guide, it will retrieve the slash config, it will retrieve the slash writing, in short, everything that is found in all these directories. Then, the maximum number of pages to crawl depends on what kind of pages are on your site. To be generous, I'll add 250 even if not many. Output find name, it allows to specify the output file. It's a JSON we will retrieve. And then if you really want to retrieve a text, as it is in a div if you want, for example here, if I inspect the element, I inspect here and I have the content of my page which is here, and you see I have div class, I have a class container for example here, class container, so container which contains here the doc, only the doc, there's a side which is the sidebar and content, so it's basically the same content you see here, and we can add a parameter called select so you're not required to use it. 
I have not used it, it functions very well. And in point of fact, for the selector, you specify the CSS selector that you need. So here you go. If it is happy in this location, I make a copy in this place and I retrieve the selector path in the console at this location. Once I've got it, I can paste it here if I want. There you go. It could be that div.content or .content, then it's up to you to handle it. I do not need it, so I will not use it. Moreover, I save. Press Ctrl O to save and Ctrl X to quit the program. So now I have my configuration ready so I can start crawling my website. So to start the crawl, it's simple, still in the console, just do an npm start. And he will initiate, commence the project and begin the process of crawling on all fours. You see, he arrives on guide, then he goes through the links, retrieves all the contents. There you go, he has covered 22 pages, that's about what I think, well that's exactly what there is. He accomplished etc, all is well. And it made a file for me, so let's go check what's inside. This file in the GPT crawler directory is called output.json, and if I look, well it might be a little small there, but output.json contains all the content related to all the pages. So, there you have it, there's the title, URL and content of the page. It's simple, just a way to retrieve data without bothering with a website. The interesting part is we can make the bot. So how do we make the bot? Go to chat.gpt, chatopenai.com and here at the top left if you have the bots you can explore. Explore, you see all the little bots, we can edit, add, etc. I'll make a new one, create a new bot. And there, I have already shown you this part, we can discuss with him, or in the configure tab, we can configure it directly. I am going to speak to him, I am going to greet him, I desire a bot that responds to all of my inquiries in the French language. Regarding the content discovered in the attachments of file 6, I simply inform him about it, and then proceed to drag and drop the JSON file, named output JSON, that was generated for me by the GPT crawler. I slide it, I put it in, he'll upload it, for now nothing complicated, and I send. He updates GPT, anyway, the bot, the assistant. Actually, what he does is just toss the JSON behind him. We'll check later what it does, don't worry. A small trick, not too complex, but nice when we have a... Well, for example, I have documentation, I don't want to go through all the patches, I don't want to bother trying to understand everything. JGPT, he'll understand all, respond in French, do all needed. Well, he answers in English, but if you ask him to reply in French, he can do it. He suggests I call him a file expert. Call him, as the software creator is Jimmy Kail, let's call him Jimmy. Generates a pick for the bot. Let it finish, then we'll test. Here, suggest this to me, suits me, there you go, perfect. I reply in French again. Dimitri didn't understand well, French content assistant. It's true that I won't provide more details, but if we examine it a bit, he keeps questioning me. But if we consider the configuration, here, the prompt was generated. There are dummy questions here, so you can modify that, I already explained it. But the most important thing is that my output JSON is here. So there you go. I am going to say your GPT is designed to answer all your questions in French regarding, and here I am going to say, Jimmy Kyle's Hugo theme stack. No need to add anything else. Very well, I'm happy. I'll delete the questions, it's useless. Here, now I have my bot, I can save it, I can share it if I want, if we make it public. Imagine a GPT chatbot publicly accessible to all readers of your site, able to respond in a way based on the content you have provided it. This chatbot will be available to anyone who reads your site, and it will use the information you provide to generate responses. For now, I'll do on limit, I confirm so I can test it here, or I can test it directly on the ChatGPT side. So, now I'm going to ask him a question that relates to the documentation I made him absorb. I will put the document aside so we can compare the answers. So this is the official documentation of the tool that interests me, so guide, and for example if I see here custom menu, there are methods that explain how to add menus. So I am going to state, I would like to add a custom menu to my theme, what is the most optimal approach to accomplish this task? There, I inquire, and he starts answering. So he replies, well, the best thing is to add in the front matter such and such thing. There you go, that's the solution. He provides the documentation example, translates it into French, and explains that the icon's name has become icon name. He explains parameters, everything, tells what I have to do, what I want to do. 
Not all content he's giving is necessarily on this page, since he has absorbed everything, can also respond about other things in other parts of documentation. Nevertheless, at least, I possess clear and concise explanations of how to execute this or that. For instance, if I wish to indicate the reading time, how do I insert, or rather, what is the precise tag that should be included in the theme to display the reading time of an article? Here, he says, I must use the reading time field, which aligns with my documentation, and he explains how to use and integrate it. In short, it's super simple, finally GPT crawler is practical since the tool will retrieve all the data from your website, so I should test it on my site, but since I have more than 17,000 articles, I'm not sure if they will handle it well, but we can try, I will try, but in any case, for technical tools, documentation, this kind of thing can be a good way for you, for me too, I don't hide it to easily have access to the documentation in French, accessible, affordable, and above all, that we will be able to query. Discussing with your own documentation, if there's a point you don't get, it can explain or extrapolate from what it knows to clarify as best as it can. Here it is, and it makes a good assistant, and once again, GPT assistance can be shared, so if you have, I don't know, a specialized website in cat kibbles, and you have 50 or 100 or 150 articles on how to choose your cat's kibbles, etc., you can give him all that to eat, and then make a chatbot, offer it to your buyers, to your customers, and they will be able to chat with your website in quotation marks to choose their kibbles or any questions they may have about the kibbles that have already been answered on your website. There, I found that interesting. The tools are GPT Crawler, I'll put the links on Patreon, and of course ChatGPT with its new feature, GPTs, i.e. customizable GPT assistance. There you go, thanks for listening, hope you found it interesting, enjoyed it, see you next week, thanks for your support, it's cool, have a good week, see you soon, bye.